Wonderful. Thank you for being on page 32 with me. Our lesson title, let's be tracking 5.2c lesson, more proportional table stories and graphs. So you guys are almost proportional experts, but we need to look into a few more details. So you're going to need a ruler and a calculator today to be successful. So let's take a look at number one. Track along with me as I read the story. Tony ran in a marathon. Go, oh, Tony. The graph given below represents the distance she traveled over the course of the race. So here's our graph, and we need to complete this table. Notice time in hours t is on the x-axis. So those are our independent variables. And our miles ran y to the sky on the y-axis. So that means that's dependent. The miles we run depends on how much time we ran for. So let's see if we can use this graph to pull some points. Well, an important point is always at the beginning. At time zero, where is Tony? That's right, she ran zero miles because she's at the starting line. So let's see, at one hour, if I go up on my graph, that corresponds with what does it correspond with, you guys? Yes, one hour of time corresponds with six miles. Okay, so let's see. At two miles a time, that corresponds with 12 miles. Good, so see if we look at three, go all the way up, plot that point. Three hours of running. Tony's at what mile in the marathon, everybody? 18, good and four hours into her marathon. She's been running for quite some distance. Go up to your graph. Corresponds with 24. Hmm. So let's take a look. Part B, is the relationship between time and distance proportionally related? Hmm. If this is proportional, it's gonna have a constant unit rate. Justify your answer using the table of values graph and the equation. So each representation has a specific reason or wording we want to use. Table. Well, let's go back to our table of values. Looking at our table of values, how do we know if a table is proportional? It has to do with multiplying. Can you think of anything? Oh, that's right. If every independent value can be multiplied by the same number to get the dependent value. So let's look at this table. What do I multiply zero to get zero? Well, anything, so that's not gonna help. Okay, let's look at one. So let's go one times what gets me six? Six. Two times what gets me 12? Six. Three times what gets me 18? <gasps> six. And four times what gets you 24? Six. So that means zero times six gets you zero. Excellent, wonderful. And is there a unit rate in this table? Well, here's this unit rate, which tells me that this unit rate is equal to this constant number I'm multiplying by. Oh, let's get to explaining why this table is proportional. Is this table proportional? Yes proportional because, I'm going to use b slash c for because, each number of hours are independent variable can be multiplied, we're always multiplying, remember, by the, and it was a special word we learned, not just unit rate, not just constant number, but it's a constant number. It tells us it's proportional, so it's the constant of proportionality. Multiplied by the constant of proportionality. Constant of proportionality, which is six to result in the corresponding, because we want the one that corresponds to it, not just any of them, corresponding number of miles. 
which is the dependent variable. The number of miles ran depends on how many hours spent running. Excellent, good job on that table. We've been dealing with that for a couple of lessons. So let's go back and think about our graph. So let's go back up to our graph. How do we know if a graph is proportional? There's a special shape we're looking for. The graph must be a straight line. No, we don't say straight line anymore. The graph must be linear. The graph must be linear and there's something it needs to include. It needs to include the origin, zero, zero. Good. Is this graph, if I just showed you the graph of this relationship, would you be able to tell me if the relationship is proportional? Of course you would. You would say this graph, yes, proportional. I'll zoom up a little bit. Proportional. The graph is linear. If you said straight line, you could say that, but I prefer my mini mathematician saying linear. One straight line, not multiple straight line, one straight line. And, it needs both, and includes the origin, which we can call zero, zero, if it has a special name. So now let's think about the equation. If I was going to write an equation for this relationship, hmm, well, we have m, let's go back up to our table, m as the number of miles ran and t is the number of hours. So remember, our equation for a proportional relationship is always y equals something because we're doing something to the independent to get the dependent. So our equation is going to be m equals, and we're going to multiply some number times t. So what are we always doing to t to get to m? Multiply, oh, we're multiplying by 6. Excellent. So let's talk about why this equation shows a proportional relationship. Is the equation proportional? If I only told you that m is equal to 6t. Could you tell me this relationship is proportional? Why, yes, you could. You should say, yes, proportional. The equation only has multiplication, multiplication, and is in the form y equals constant of proportionality times x, your unit rate times x. So now we can explain why the table graph and equation is proportional. So let's take a look at C. Where do you see the constant of proportionality in the table, graph, and equation? Well, let's make some organization. So we want to talk about the table. We want to talk about the graph. And we want to talk about the equation. Where do we see the constant of proportionality in each one of these representations? Well, if we're looking for the table and we want to look for our constant of proportionality. Well, it's right here and it's right here. So our constant of proportionality in the table is when one hour corresponds to six miles, our unit rate, another word for constant of proportionality. Unit rate, which equals constant of proportionality. Awesome. So let's go back down and talk about why our table, where do we see our constant proportionality in our table graph and equation? Table, one hour corresponds with six miles. Excellent. So let's take a look at our graph. Where could we see per 
1 in our graph. Well, if we look at our graph for our constant of proportionality, notice that at 1 hour, we went 6 miles. So the coordinate, or the ordered pair, or the point, 1, 6, x, y, 1, 6 is your constant of proportionality. I'm going to just do it COP for right now. So in the graph, ordered pair, 1, 6. That's where I find my constant proportionality. And in the equation, well, if we look at our equation, which we still have right here, there's the 6. What is that called, the number in front of the variable? Hmm, number in front of the variable being multiplied by x. It's called the constant proportionality, but in all equations, it's called your coefficient. 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 Number in front. Or being multiplied. Of t. In this case, your independent value. Could be x also. Awesome. Great job, kiddos. Let's keep going. Suppose another runner started at the same time as Tony. Ooh, competition. So another runner, please track with me. Let's start one more time. Have your trackers out. Thank you. Suppose another runner started at the same time as Tony and in three and a half hours ran a distance of 20 miles. Which runner was going faster and how do you know? Well, if I want to look at who's going faster, I can look at hours per miles or miles per hour. What do you think is going to be most efficient here? I think miles per hour is going to be the best unit rate to look at because that tells me speed. So let's take a look and we already know that Tony is running six miles per one hour. So our other runner is going, went three and a half hours and traveled 20 miles. So let's simplify this. Let's simplify this. And when we use our calculators, so grab your calculator and figure out what does that mean for one hour? For one hour. Well, if I want to make 3.5 into 1, divide, okay. And let's go to the hundredths place. So that's about 5.7, 1 or 2, 1 or 2 or 0. Oh, 1. 5.71 miles per one hour. Is this faster or slower than Tony? Well, in fact, Tony is running faster. Tony is running faster because she is traveling more miles in the same amount of time. Another way we could look at this, if we didn't want to compare the unit rate, is we could take a look at the graph. Well, if we take a look, three and a half hours is our other runner. So if we go up to our graph and go to three and a half hours about and go to 20, notice that our other runner has traveled less distance in the same amount of time and hence is going slower. Excellent job. We're going to turn the page and do some more practice. We're going to start the next video. So please start the next video now. Thank you.